If you're thinking about buying a new premium rangefinder, but you're not sure which one to get, I've bought my top three for under $400 with me today, and I'm gonna run through which one I think is the best. We've got the Bushnell Tor V6 Shift, the Garmin Approach Z30, and the ShotScope Pro ZR. So in this video, I'm gonna run through all the details of each of these rangefinders, and I'm gonna tell you what I like, what I dislike, and which one I think you should buy. If you find this video helpful, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, and let's crack on. Now there are cheaper rangefinders that you can buy that have some or many of the features that these three have. And you can also spend more money to get some additional features that these are all lacking. Both the Bushnell Tor V6 Shift as well as the Garmin Approach Z30 retail for $399, whereas the Pro ZR from ShotScope retails for just $299. Now to save you time, first of all, let's cover off all of the key features that these three rangefinders have in common. They all have six times magnification, they all have a flag lock mode, and they all have the ability to adjust the yardage for slope. They all have an integrated magnet on the back so you can clip it to the side of your cart. They can all switch from meters to yards if you really wanna make that change. And they all have some element of water resistance, although it does vary depending on which model you choose, so we'll get into that in a bit. They all run off of a replaceable CR2 battery, and despite their own individual design features, they all look and feel of a good quality and similar weights. All three also come with a pretty similar design softshell case. Now, if you've seen any of my individual reviews of these rangefinders, you'll also know that they are also very accurate within a yard or two of each other. Let's just prove that now. Starting with the Bushnell Tor V6, if I just quickly flag lock this one right here, it's telling me 157. Next up, the Garmin. This one's telling me 158. And lastly, the ShotScope Pro ZR is telling me 157. With all these similarities out of the way, let's start by taking a closer look at the Bushnell Tor V6. Bushnell are the industry leader when it comes to rangefinders. They have been for absolute years. And it's a brand name that people generally trust, including professional golfers, with the majority of Tor players trusting a Bushnell. It retails for $399, and one of the key unique features of this unit is that it utilizes what Bushnell call their visual jolt system. Now that means when you lock onto the flag, not only does it vibrate, just like the other two units here, but also you get a little red ring that flashes up, letting you know that you've locked onto the flag. In terms of water resistance, the V6 has a IPX6 rating. Now that means that it can withstand heavy amounts of water being applied to it, although it can't withstand a full submersion for a significant period of time. Generally speaking, that's gonna be enough for the vast majority of golfers, unless you accidentally drop it in a lake. According to Bushnell, the flag lock works up to 500 yards and you can scan up to 1300 yards although who's really kind of scanning those distances. With the V6, you get access to the Bushnell GPS app, so you can see the course layout and some yardages on your phone if you want to use that out on the course. And lastly, you get a two-year warranty from Bushnell. Hopefully, you never have to rely on it. In terms of what I like about the unit, well, I really like the visual jolt technology. It's really nice to use. It really gives you that confirmation that you've locked onto the flag, and it just looks good when you're using it. Do you need it? No. Is it nice that it's there? Absolutely. I really like how quick this unit locks onto the flag, and it is a very nice and clear, bright display when you look down the viewfinder. The LED is nice and crisp. Generally, I think it looks pretty good in terms of the design, but generally it just feels really nice in the hand. It's got some nice texture where you want it. You've got a little cut out here for your thumb, and the button to use is nice and big, and it has a really good click to it is really satisfying to use. I like the fact that it has that IPX6 water resistance rating, so if it does rain, which it looks like it might do soon, you're not gonna be worried about using this out in the rain and it breaking, which is a real big deal because it's quite a lot of money. In terms of the dislikes, the only real dislike that I've got is simply the price. $399 is a lot of money to spend on a golf accessory. Doesn't mean that that's bad value for money, you're getting a lot of technology and a lot of quality packed into the unit, but at the end of the day, 
if you're looking to save a bit of money, this probably won't be the one for you. That being said, I am starting to see this on sale. So at the time of recording, I did see it on sale for $329. Or you can even consider picking up the previous iteration of the Bushnell, the V5 shift. Now I do fund this channel all by myself. So to help support it, I'd really appreciate it if you'd wanna hit the like and subscribe button. And in the description, I've included a link to sign up to my free monthly golf deals newsletter. It only takes 10 seconds to sign up. And every month I handpick the best golf deals that I find each month and send them straight to your inbox. Thanks so much for the support. Let's get on with the video. Next up is the Garmin Z30. Now this is the newest rangefinder of the bunch. And if you have a compatible Garmin GPS watch or use the GPS app on your phone, then this does some really special things. The unit will connect to your watch or the app via Bluetooth. And first of all, when you laser the flag, not only do you get to see the distance to the flag, as you'd expect, as well as the slope if you've got that turned on, but it will also tell you the distance the flag is to the front, as well as to the back of the green. So that gives you a really good indication as to whether the pin is tucked tight at the front or pushed right at the back. Now, as an average 16 handicap golfer, that information I like to think is helpful, although definitely not critical. However, if you are a really highly skilled golfer, you are actually probably gonna really like that information. You can see for yourself roughly where a flag is sometimes, but it's really good to have that information from two to three up to 400 yards away. The unit has got a few more tricks up its sleeve as well. So when you do flag lock onto the flag, it will actually update your GPS watch. I don't know if you can see it there, and it will then let you know how far the flag is right the way throughout the hole. So the benefit of that is if you're standing on a tee box, say it's a 350 yard tee, and you scan it from the very tee box, you don't need to laser the flag again. The distance to the flag will just dynamically update as you walk closer to the hole. You can also use the scan feature on the device to scan a hazard. So let's say I scan to maybe that tree over there, and then the watch will update and add that into the list of hazards. So you can see here, laser range, 62 yards. Another benefit of this Bluetooth connection is that if you are using the Garmin app, there's a find my rangefinder feature. So it will let you know on a course map the last place that it was connected to the phone. So hopefully you have an idea of where it is and you'll be able to find it again. If you do use the Garmin CT10 tags with your watch, then when you use the rangefinder, it will actually help get really specific yardages to the flag, which will mean that you get better data on your stats as well. But as I say, that only applies if you're using the CT10 tags. God, that's a tongue twister. CT10 tags, say that three times fast. Garmin's got another trick up its sleeve in that this unit is IPX7 waterproof. So it's the next level up from the Bushnell. What that means is that you can submerge this in up to, I think, one meter of water for up to 30 minutes and it should still function. I haven't had the chance to test it out. There's a lake there, but I don't think I've really got the arm to get there. But that's nice to know that you've got that additional water resistance built into the unit. The Garmin approach only does a flag lock up to 400 yards, but Garmin say it has a similar scanning range of up to 1300, just like the Bushnell. The LED display on the Garmin is red, and it's a very bright red compared to the Bushnell, which is a black LED display. And again, you're getting up to a two year warranty with Garmin on this. Now, in terms of the likes, if you've already got a Garmin compatible GPS watch or you use the Garmin app, then there's a lot to like with using this because you are getting some really unique features that you simply don't get on any other rangefinder. Using this over the course of several rounds now, I've got to say that I really do quite like knowing how close the pin is tucked to the front or pushed up to the back. Not that I'm good enough to take advantage of that information, but I like that I know it. I also really like the fact that you can scan from the tee box and then just look at your watch if you want to. You don't have to worry about getting your rangefinder out again on that hole. Now, of course, I've just run through these as the details, but I also really like the fact that you get the additional waterproof rating here with this being IPX7 rated. And I do like the fact that this has the find my rangefinder feature, but I don't use the Garmin app. And I've got a feeling that a lot of other golfers don't use the Garmin app either. So, it's good that it's there, but I don't know how many are really gonna benefit from it. I also really like the brightness and vibrance of the red LED display, or it might be OLED actually, I have to double check that. But I really like the brightness of the display when you're looking down the rangefinder. It is really nice and crisp and really bright. 
And the last thing I really like is the fact that this, I think, is perhaps better value than the Bushnell if you have a Garmin compatible watch to use with it. You're simply getting some additional unique features that the Bushnell doesn't have, and they cost the same amount of money. At least they retail for the same amount of money. That also means that if you don't currently have a Garmin, you could still buy this as a rangefinder. It's a good competitor to the Bushnell. And then if you do then later get a Garmin watch that's compatible with this, you unlock those benefits. In terms of my dislikes, well, the first one is the opposite of that last point I made in terms of the likes. If you know that you are not going to have or use a Garmin compatible watch and you don't want to use the Garmin app on your smartphone, then you've got a whole core bunch of features that you're simply not going to be able to take advantage of. Another slight dislike is that when you are using the rangefinder, it takes a second or two just for the Bluetooth to kick in to then link and talk to your watch. Now, it's not a huge, huge issue and you do get used to it very quickly, but I've got to say, if I use it right now as an example, there we go, now it's connected and now it can tell me those yardages. So it's 18 from the front and 18 from the back. It just takes a little bit longer to get all the information compared to using the Bushnell or the shot scope. My last issue with the Garmin is not to do with the unit itself, but actually to do with the case. If you take a look here, you can see that for some reason, the elastic strap has really kind of stretched thin and frayed on the pull tab here, which means that when I put it in the case and then hook the pull tab over, well, there's a lot of give and play in that strap. And that meant that the last time I was using it, the rangefinder was nearly falling out of the case because the strap isn't tight enough. Now, I don't know whether that's because I have just unfortunately caught this strap somewhere along the line, or I don't know if that's a defect in the case. I'll have to kind of keep an eye out for comments on this, something to look out for for sure, but unfortunately, it's a little bit annoying on this version that I've bought with my own money. Now that brings us on to the ShotScope Pro ZR. So first of all, let's cover off the unique details of this unit. The rangefinder has a unique case design. I think ShotScope call it a Duracell case. So it's this combination of a metallic case with rubber grip elements as well. Clues kind of in the name, hopefully to give it a little bit more durability. A unique feature of the ShotScope that the other two doesn't have is the fact that you can switch between a red or black heads up display depending upon the light conditions or depending upon what you prefer to look at. The shot scope is also water resistant. It claims that it has that on its website. Although when I asked my shot scope representative, they couldn't confirm whether it was actually IPX6 water resistant or IPX7. So my assumption is that they've done some testing on it, but not enough to actually put it through those official IPX ratings. So this has water resistance, but to an unknown extent. The ProZR has a yardage scan range of up to 1500 yards, which is a little bit more than the other two. But on the website, I couldn't find any indication as to how far the flag lock mode will actually work. Now, when you buy the ShotScope, you also get access to their ShotScope app, which means that on the course, you can get an aerial view and some yardages using your smartphone, similar to the Bushnell. You're also getting a two year warranty, which is the same as the other two. But with the ShotScope, they offer a unique 30 day money back satisfaction guarantee. So if you buy the unit, you're not happy with it, you can return it and get your money back. The first thing that I really like with the Pro ZR is the price. At $299, it's $100 cheaper than the other two. And you can often find ShotScope products in some pretty good sales as well. So make sure you look out for those bargains. And at that discounted price, to be honest, it works just as well as the other two. I haven't had any issues with the flag lock, as you saw from the beginning, it's just as accurate. It's only a yard different compared to one of those units. It feels good quality in hand. It's got a substantial amount of weight behind it. And the Duracell case does feel pretty robust. And I don't have any issues with the quality of the rangefinder when you're actually looking down the lens. It's nice and snappy to use the flag lock mode. The vibrate is there. It could be a little bit stronger, but it's got all those key features that you want at a significant cheaper price point. I like the fact that you can choose between the red or the black heads up display on the screen. So depending upon the light conditions, you can choose what works best for you. I also like the fact that ShotScope offer that 30 day return warranty. So if you don't like it, as long as you're quick, 
you can send it back and get all your money back. I do like that because it shows that ShotScope believe in their products and they're happy to stand by them. I do have a few dislikes with this unit as well. First one is the buttons. When you're using the unit, it's just not as nice a click with them. They feel maybe a little bit softer. You can use it. It doesn't mean that it stops from working at all, but it's just not quite as satisfying to use. It also is the widest of the three. Now I've got pretty small little hands. Doesn't mean that I have a problem that I'm gonna drop it or anything like that, but the other two do sit more comfortably in my hand. This one just feels a little bit bigger and chunkier. Some might like that. For me personally, that's a dislike. Another dislike with this is the fact that the ProZR for me run through its battery really quickly. This is the second battery that I've had to put in it. I think I've had it for under a year. I've certainly not used it a huge, huge amount because I've been testing so many other rangefinders. Now, initially I thought maybe that was just me. Maybe I left it sitting with the button pressed so that it used up all of its laser. But I've also seen comments on other reviews and even reviews on the ShotScope website for the product itself saying a similar thing. So keep an eye out for the battery life on this one. It's great that the unit has some element of water resistance, but compared to the other two, it doesn't have an official IPX rating. So I'm not 100% sure exactly how far I can push this in terms of it getting wet. So which one do I think you should buy? Well, if you've already got a compatible Garmin GPS watch or you use the Garmin app, I think of the three, I would recommend the Garmin Approach Z30. I just think the additional benefits that you're getting with those unique features when it links to the app are just totally worth it given that it costs the same amount of money as the Bushnell. And I think that the advantages that that has over the shot scope, if you've got the budget to stretch to $399, the Garmin is the one I'd be going with. If you've not got a compatible Garmin GPS and you're probably not gonna buy one or you know that you're not the type of golfer that's gonna wanna use a watch and a rangefinder out on the course, then I'd recommend the Bushnell Tour V6. This is a great rangefinder. Actually probably feels the best in hand while I'm just kind of holding all three now. And you know the quality that you're going to be getting with a device like this. It's incredibly accurate, it's incredibly fast to use, and it's nice to use as well. If you're on a budget and you wanna save a bit of money, then I'd actually recommend not necessarily buying the ShotScope Pro ZR, but maybe check out the offers that you can find on the previous version of the Bushnell, the Tor V5 Shift. At this point, you can probably find brand new units that cost the same amount or maybe even less than the Pro ZR. However, that doesn't mean that the Pro ZR is bad, and certainly if you can find some significant discounts on this, then it's definitely worth your consideration, especially if you like the sound of being able to change your display color from red to black. And don't forget, this is often in some pretty significant sales, so I'll include any links to buy any of these rangefinders, along with any exclusive discount codes down in the description below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know if you use any of these freeze rangefinders and how you get on with them. And let me know if there's anything that I've missed. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to sign up to my free monthly golf deals newsletter. I've included it as the first link down in the description below. And if you're wanting a little bit more information on any of these rangefinders, I've included my full reviews right here.